All right, today we are working on a 2011 Jetta. Now this is the base model, it's nothing fancy about it. I think this should probably be similar to the other models. Now before you start this job, for your new shoes, you need to make sure that they're not bent. So basically what I mean is that this guy right here, this is for the emergency brake shoe, needs to sit right in the middle of here just like how this one is so these are both for the same side so there's gonna be one for the driver side and one for the passenger side so they're gonna be similar so you need to make sure that they're the same now see how right there that bottom piece where the silver is is lining up with that now you can see how far off that one is so you need to make sure that this is lined up with that if not you're gonna have a hard time setting this you're gonna have a hard time setting the the disc the drum disc on the the brake shoes um, so I mean you don't want to come across that where you're just gonna be scratching your head and be like hey what's going on now what I would recommend is to have a rack I will show out a layout for this as a very simple job just be very patient it's just like a puzzle so I mean if you're very patient with it and you can take the job I mean you only need a few, few simple tools and this will save you a few hundred dollars for this specific job um, but if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and comment below if you have any questions in regards to the brake job. I'm only going to be showing you for one side because I already did the driver or the passenger side, so I'm just going to be showing you on the driver side. Now you need to do this one um, one side at a time. Do not pull off everything at the same time because that's kind of that's going to basically screw, screw yourself over because. Whatever this side looks like, the other side is going to look like too as well. So we want to leave one side as a picture just in case like, hey, you know, if you forget whatever goes back on the on one side, you have the other side as a reference. So keep that in mind. But then again, you will have this video as a reference. So I hope this will be as a very great tutorial video for this. So we'll get to this video after this intro. So now here we have our drum. So basically, if you haven't already, um, if you need to take off this bolt, um, and if you don't have like a little impact gun, you can put on the emergency brake on so you can lock this in place and then go ahead and take this off. So this is gonna be a T27. So T27, if I can get it to focus. So right there. Now if this is stuck, what you can do is get a hammer and hit it from both sides until it breaks up, breaks apart. So here's how the whole brake shoe system is, is. I'm hearing like a little clicking sound, so I believe this guy is banging up on this piece. So basically, um, just remember how this would go so you can use this as a reference. We got a spring under here, then we have this spring. Now this is very simple, we can do these by hand. Um, you don't need a special tool for anything. So here's everything, basically hold the spring set up. We got one spring on the back. Just like that, here's the other spring. There's not too much tension on this, this one just rides right out. Then we have the spring on the bottom, that connects with the other side too as well. So before we start anything, I would recommend to have a rag under so that we can lay down our parts evenly so that we know we're not mixing any parts or losing any parts. So this is going to be like a puzzle again. So once we just slap back all the other remaining parts, we can use this kind of as a little reference. Now pretty much I'm going to have these tools. I'm going to be using a flathead, a small pick, and a big pick. Not necessarily you're going to need to use this one, but just in case, you know, if you're having a hard time. So for this guy right here, we can go ahead and use we're going to go ahead and just release the tension right here. Now we're just going to pull this guy back. Or lift up.
So just be careful that this doesn't fly into you. So basically as this guy was right in there, this I, I lifted this guy up and then I pushed this pin while lifting up. I pushed against right here so it popped right out of place. So now we're gonna go ahead and lay this down. Now this is how it looks like right after. I took that off. I just wanna make sure I'm pretty visual on this so just in case if any of you guys mess up. Next, we're gonna go ahead and push. There's a pin in behind this. So there's like one thing that kind of sticks out. Um, I'll go ahead and show this after I pull this out. So basically you would push down right here. You would push towards the towards yourself and then you'd push this, the, the retainer clip towards the, the drum itself and and then turn until it gets out of the pin like this. This is the pin I'm pushing again. So I'm just pushing this top hat and then we'll just go ahead and keep this on one side. I will show how I laid out everything so you guys can see that. And now we have this guy's free. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull down on this spring. There's not too much tension on that so you don't have to worry about it flying all around. So now for this guy, we're gonna go ahead and take off this spring and then just pull towards it and then release it. Now we pretty much have this guy out the way. So same thing for this side, we're gonna go ahead and push down. Oh, and then right here, this guy right here, we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. Just forgot about this. Um, that just slides right in and out, just like that. There's a little guide pin right here just to keep this in place. So be careful, there's gonna be a lot of tension in this spring. So we can lift this guy right up. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna lift up on the bottom of this and then pull it back so we can slide this guy right out. So basically, we're gonna go ahead and release the tension right here on this spring. Um, there's a few ways that we can do this. We can either release this right now with this guy. So we can either pull this right back. So we'll pull this right down, just like this. Pull that back. So just like that. So you'd pull this way and then pull down. So remember this, this is still tensioned. Um, if this hits your hand, it's gonna really hurt. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and um, pry right back here. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull back. Now there's gonna be a lot of tension, so you wanna face this away from you. So we're gonna go ahead and face this into the ground and just pull right back and just like that. And then we'll go ahead and pull this back. The way how this is gonna come off is once you release the whole thing and then it'll slide right out. And there you have it. So don't forget how this goes on. So, so we'll go just like that. And that'll be in the drum. So we'll go ahead and set this right here. So here's our layout. So now we have a very nice simple way of it being organized and nothing all mixed up. So this is how I always do my, my brake shoes job. So it's not confusing. I'll remember how it goes. Always take pictures every time you take off something so that you remember how it goes. Now for this guy, I would recommend to clean up. So you can go ahead and use like a degreaser. You can use purple power to clean up and then rinse right off with the, so with some water or use a rag to dry it right off right after. So right here, I'm kind of using that LA's Awesome degreaser. So basically you're just gonna kind of spray your way around. So, so before we put anything back, we're gonna go ahead and check the wheel cylinder. So we wanna make sure there's no leaks inside here because if there are, then um, now's a great time to replace that. So we're gonna go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver and then we're just gonna Pry in between here. Now you're not gonna force into the boot because we don't wanna damage that. So we're gonna go ahead and just pick it out very slowly. 
Now we just want to make sure that no liquid's coming out. So we don't see any liquid, any brake fluid that's coming out. Now if there is liquid, brake fluid, just brake fluid, not the liquid they use to clean, um, we're going to have to go ahead and replace that wheel cylinder. Now we have to check both sides because one side can leak and then the other one doesn't. So everything seems pretty fine. So again, you don't want to pull off the whole boot. You just kind of want to, you know, just just peel it off a little bit, just like that, and then just place it right back, just like that. Now for the, the little pins, so you, these, you want to make sure that they don't pop out all the way. So you just want to make sure that these are moving freely, which they are. So now we're pretty much ready to reverse the order on this. So right here on the brake, on the back of the, the drum, there's these little pins. Now normally you can replace them. There should be at least six of them in total, three on this side. So one, two, three, and then on the other side there should be one, two, three, so six in total. So now what you can do, um, you don't have to, but I would recommend it to grease them up. That was a little bit overkill on the grease. Uh, I'll go ahead and wipe off the remaining. Now this will help out for any noises coming out from the brake shoes, just in case like any vibrations or anything, you don't want to hear any squeaks. That will prevent that or any like kind of little chatter rattles. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and put back this guy on. So we're going to put on this plate first. Now make sure how this little notch is right here. So there is two notches. This one's going to be going away from the one with the, the brake shoe um, puller. So we're going to go ahead and seat this guy right in. Make sure that this lip is caught inside because if not, you're going to have some seating issues and fully seat it in. Make sure it's right in here too as well. Then we're going to go ahead and get our spring. Now remember this goes on the inside out. I'm going to hold this with my thumb. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull this guy right back. Now I'm going to have a rag right there in front of me. so. It protects my thumb so I don't damage it because trust me I do not want this flying right out my thumb and so I'm just gonna pull back with this now you gotta put a little bit tension just pry right there Dishwasher. So now we're just going to go ahead and spin back our pick. Don't pull back. You're just going to spin it right out just like that. So now this is on. So this is pretty tension. So we just want to keep this pretty still. We don't want this exploding on us. So now we're going to go ahead and put this guy right on. Um, this, is a, this one's actually pretty fairly easy to put on. So remember how it's going to go. So first we're going to pull on this spring. We're just going to kind of pull this guy right back. So I'm going to try to hold this with two hands. Let's see if I can do this. Here, let me see if I can do it with the flat head. Okay, so now that we got that in, so what I did was, as I was pushing this up, I was pulling the spring back, and it slid right in. And then basically, you would go ahead and slide this right over here. Turn that around. Make sure that this spring is fully seated and um, nowhere around, like seating un uneven. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this back.
Now, if you're having a hard time setting this in, um, they do sell a tool for that. Um, I can show you the tool right now. So this is the tool specifically for that. Now this makes it very easy to sit in with that. So um, if you're having a hard time, you can go ahead and put this in. So before we put in our brake shoe, make sure we seat in our pin. So we'll just seat that guy right in there just like that. And then we'll go ahead and get our brake shoe. Make sure that this, this corresponds with that. And then we're going to go ahead and put the pin back on. Make sure that the bottom is sitting behind this and not in front. So, because if not, you're going to have a hard time. And then while holding this with your thumb, very lightly, not too much pressure. And then we're going to get this guy. We'll just slide it right in, just like that. And just like that, that's how you're going to seat it in. So now we're going to go ahead and put on our spring. So make sure this is how it sits. So we're going to go ahead and start off with one side. doesn't matter which side you start off with. There's, there's no right or wrong. And then we're going to pull with our flathead. So now be careful because now this this can go wrong this can bounce out so basically I'm just gonna go ahead and push this right here and then I'm gonna bang with I'm gonna bang with my palm so just like this and then I'm gonna hit it with my palm so now that's fully seated in so now pretty much our last spring that we're going to go ahead and put in. We're going to go ahead and seat this guy right in here first. We'll just put that guy right in there. Nothing special about it. And then we'll go ahead and grab our pick. And then just pull back. And then we're going to push down on the spring. Make sure that this doesn't slip. And then spin, spin this guy right out, just like that. And now our last spring, we're gonna go ahead and do same thing. There's not too much tension on this. You can actually do this by hand if you would like. All right, so now that we got everything on, now there's one more thing uh, we need to do before we put on the drum. So you gotta go inside the vehicle and we gotta make some adjustments prior before doing this. All right, so where the shift lever is, um, basically right here. Now we, meet, we need to loosen up the whole emergency parking system. So we're gonna just go ahead and just lift this guy right up with the flathead screwdriver. And the same thing right here, there's going to be these little two options right there, little slots. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put in our flathead and then just kind of twist clockwise while laying at an angle. And right here, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter. Now you can use a wrench to do this. Now I already have it pretty much loosened all the way. Um, well basically as you would do this, I'm using a ratcheting wrench. Now if you're using a regular wrench, um, it's gonna take you a while. So you just basically just loosen it. I just need to loosen it just a tad bit more.
All right, so right there, that's pretty much how I have it. I think you'll probably have have about about three quarters of an inch left. And um, yeah, we can go ahead and just try to see if we can put everything back together. So if you still can't get on your rotor because you bought off the market pads like me, um, again, I'm gonna be using the 120 grit. And then you're gonna kind of file this down just a little bit, just enough so where we can get the rotor on. So basically, again, you're just gonna get a small strip and just kind of try to get the full of the pad and just go back and forth. Make sure you have a, a mask on too because you don't want to be re be breathing this in. It's very bad for your lungs. All right, so I thought I was recording, but it ended up cutting out. So again, after you finish, I'm just redoing this process so that you can see this. But after you finish like sanding it down, make sure it's nice and smooth. We're gonna go ahead and put on the drum. But if the drum goes on too tight, you need to loosen up the adjustment in the inside the car so that this is not, the bottom piece is not too, uh, it doesn't have too much tension. So don't forget to make sure that you line up this with this guy right here. So make sure it goes in pretty s smooth and that it's spinning freely. Then we can pull it out. Oh, well, it doesn't want to come out right now, but it went in pretty smooth. Um, if I want to take it off, if I, if I did want to take it off, I kind of have to hammer it out a little bit. Um, so now we'll go ahead and put on the, the little star bit. Tap on the bottom a little bit, just in case if it hasn't seated in properly. And also, if you're having a hard time lining the, the rim up with the holes right there, you can pull the emergency brake to um, hold the drum in place while the rim, while the rim will spin. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten the bolts in a star pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and put on our, our center cap right after we're done. I'm not going to do that at this moment. But make sure, again, your wheel's spinning nice and freely. If you do hear a little bit of noise, don't worry. Um, that will go away. And that could take up to about 50 miles for it to smooth out since it is the rear system. Most important part too of this will be the tension of this. Now this will kind of let you um, get the feel for the brake. So basically the way how you're gonna pull this. Um, so one, two, three, four. So about like on the fourth one, it's gonna be like, you're gonna start feeling some tension. Five, six, seven, eight. 10 is like where it's like, oh my God, like you got to really put some force into it. So after the 10th one, that's when you really have to put some force into it. Now, what I did was, is that I tightened the bolt, the 10 millimeter bolt, about until it started getting snug right here with the, with the line. It still has some play. It's not like crazy tight. If I wanted to, I can make it a little bit more tighter, but... I think that's actually pretty perfect for right there. Some other people are going to have different opinions. They're going to be like, hey, you know, you should do it at three clicks. You should do it at four clicks. It's just the way how this style breaks that they feel. Um, I already did some adjustments to it. So now that we got everything pretty much complete, you're going to go ahead and test drive it. Now, again, um, you might hear some noise. You might some hear some squeaky noise. I did come across this where I was hearing a clicking noise on this car. So as you would apply the brakes, if you apply it a little bit more than what you should, like when you're like going to like a hard stop, you'll hear like a kind of clicking sound. Now, that's because probably you need to replace the springs on them. The ones that hold down the, the brake shoes. So the ones that you in the video where you saw me push behind the pan and I, and I, and I push the spring with my thumb. That one, the one that's holding the brake shoe in place. <clears throat> so that happened to me on the driver's side where it was clicking and then I replaced that spring and then it was perfectly fine right after that. So every time it was, uh, as I was applying brakes, it was like kind of like tugging and then it'll snap right back into place where I would get that clicking sound. 
Um, again, if this video helped you out, comment below, give it a thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button um, for more upcoming videos. And thanks for watching.